Welcome to the Modern Savvy CPA, where financial expertise meets the cutting edge of digital age. I'm Sharon, your host, a certified public accountant, here to guide you through the intricate web of numbers and regulations, offering a fresh perspective of the ever-evolving world of finance. Today, we're going to be focusing on the student loan debt crisis and who does it impact, how does it impact people differently, and um, where it's going. And it's actually a subject that's near and dear to my heart because I believe that um, for us to pick a career and, and moving forward with a career and working so hard with our school and our education, and then we are not able to live up to what it is that we're making because we have like another mortgage when it comes to the debt. So I believe that it is a crisis. So there's, of course, with the student loans, it affects some people more than others. So we're continuing this series and it's sort of on smart money habits for um, different people in different stages of life. We went through um, younger kids, teenagers, high schoolers, college students, and this is kind of something that covers us, whether you're a college student, you're a parent of a college student, you are a high school student about to go into college, and it actually you know we will we will talk about how many people that the student loan debt crisis impact um and we're going to go on with the series and talk about different things about the crisis understanding what it is and and why why it is important to us all of us and our economic society so so let's talk about that so student loan debt takes a toll on all all people. Financially, it's going to take a toll, and I'm going to tell you how it's going to work. It takes a toll definitely on the borrowers. It's changed a lot in the last decade or two. Um, when I went to college, it was mostly um, subsidized loans would be the first part of it, and then it would go into private loans and things like that. And the interest rate was pretty, pretty... Um, short, pretty low compared to other interest rates that you were going into. Now I'm seeing exuberant amount of interest rate. The loans are much bigger than it used to be before. And the the, um, deferment dates as to when you have to pay it back has gone so much closer to the time. And, And one of the issues with the student loans is like, most of the kids that are taking them out, most of the college students or um, the higher education students that are taking it out are not even finishing what they're doing. So we have several things that are happening here, several crises, if you want to ask, if you want to say that, that is happening here. And we're going to break it down and we're going to cover the different parts of it. I'm going to help you guys to understand what it is, how it's impacting different part of our society and how it is impacting some part of our society different than others and how it impacts our society as a whole. So of course, for me, I feel like um, minorities and women are impacted, have the most painful impact of the student loan uh, debt crisis. Women, Women with student loan feels the pain a little bit more, you know, according to analysis of the American Association of University Women, there nearly two thirds of student loan debt in the United States totaling almost, you know, a trillion dollars is by women compared to men, women are most likely the ones that have to finance their degree. They are tend to borrow more money than men does. it's problematic in our society, um, but it's a real crisis and it's something that is happening with female and females and it's having to repay them is another story. So, you know, the gem- gender gap comes into play when it comes to repayment also because for one reason or another, we're taking longer, women are taking longer um, p- to pay back their loans for one reason or another. So, you know, th- 
There's the gender pay gap, which still exists. People might not believe that it does, but it does exist where, um, you know, men get paid the same amount of money, 20% more than females for the same job. So uh, not that I'm going to be blaming anyone for that. That's just a part of our society. And I'm just giving you the statistics out there, what's happening. So if you're going to make 20% um, less than your male counterpart, then it's going to be harder for you to pay back your loan. So that's just a normal thing that, that happens in society. So, you know, the lower the income, the less money you make, the less amount that's going to be applied to your debt. Because once you're done with your four-year degree, whether you have a job or not, or depending on your your income, that your, your your wage that you're going to be making, the, then it will... You you're not gonna you know you know you're not gonna be able to pay back as much. You have to have a living wage plus student loan um, debt repayment. So it takes a woman longer to pay back their loans, um, and then they don't get financially ahead as fast as as men do. You know you ha you have to consider what financially ahead means. Considering financially ahead meanings, you know you finish college. What are your other financial goals when once you're done with college? You have to consider once you finish college and you have debt, student loan debt. You're starting off your life with this lump sum of money that is that is owed um so you're starting off sort of in the minus and now you have to pay back your investment in your education so um if you're gonna make less then it's gonna take you longer to pay it back it's gonna take you longer to to save for retirement it's gonna take you longer to save for a house it's gonna you know it's gonna take you longer for those type of things um one of the other things that 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 we do also is we take time off to have children and that sometimes put a dent in our um our time you know a lot of that has changed since i started having my children as to now where you know the male counterpart might take some time off to help with the kids in the house and where the where it's shared responsibility a little bit more um in my time earlier with uh, the Gen Zs, it's, it was still, even though part male counterpart was taking the role of, of helping with the kids, females feel a sense of responsibility with their children. They want to be there. Uh, I wanted to be there when my kids were doing certain things. And so I did put my career on a slower track. Uh, because I wanted to be available for my children in certain situations and certain instances. So that will definitely lower the, the time that you will take to pay your student, take you longer to pay your student loan back. Um, minority students, this should, goes without saying, bears the brunt of the student loan debt. Women, women aren't alone when it comes to this struggle. It's the minority students are the ones, you know, normally if you are a minority student and you are in the low, lower socioeconomic um, part of society, your parents didn't save for you to go to college, you know. So you have to take, you or your parent at that point have to take the, amount, take the debt out to help you invest in college. Minority women are even lower in that group when it comes to them unabling to um unable to pay their their debt so you know you just want to make sure that you know if you are in one of these groups you're paying attention to what your degree is what you're going to be making and making sure that your student loan your student loans, your investment in your education is something that you're taking to account when you're calculating how much you're going to make and how, what type of lifestyle you're going to be able to live when you graduate school. So, you know, you just want to make, you, you want to make that decision. You want to make that a part of your decision. Of course, the debt crisis affects the whole economy. You might think, oh, well, I don't have anything to worry about. I, I'm not, I don't have student loans. Um, I, I saved for my children. I have the 529 plan. They got bright futures or they got scholarships and things like that. Well, yes, they can have all of that. And then you still might have loans depending on where they go. The out of state tuition is sometimes three times as much as in-state tuition. So, so they could go to a state school in Georgia and they live in Florida and it's three times as much 
um, in Georgia. So, you know, you have to consider these things when you are looking at the college. Yes, you want to go to your dream college, but you don't want your dream college to bust your real dream of living the life that you want to live with your marketable degree. You want to make sure you're thinking about what the cost of it is and how much of it is going to be debt what part of that is going to be debt so there might most students have a combination they might have some financial aid if they're in the socioeconomic bracket they might have a little bit of scholarships that you you can you come about they might have some parents that saved up some money for them and then they might have loans so ideally usually that's what the package is but how much your loan is will depend on where you went to school and how expensive your college is. And colleges vary vastly. It could be, you know, three or four thousand dollars a semester in certain places, um, especially if you're going in state, whichever your state is, and it can be thirty or forty thousand dollars a semester, depending on if you're going out of state or you're going to a, a private university or a more expensive university. So those are the things that you you need to look at. So like I said, again, I am going to repeat that the debt crisis, the student loan debt crisis affects our entire economy. It affects our broad economy. Student loan debt crisis affect not just the individual borrower, it ex effect has an impact on the wider economy. The housing market, for example, has made a strong recovery since 2008 financial crisis. But according to one study, student loan debt delays home ownership for borrowers. So by an estimated seven years for some people. So, you, you know, that's a big deal, you know, millennials um, and um, Gen Z's and the up and coming generations is depending on if we don't get a handle on on our student loans and, and, and the whole package of understanding our, or the cost of our education, then it's going to become more and more of a problem. So, you know, you want to make sure this is this is something that we want to be thinking about, you know, the supply and demand swing on the balance of of home ownership. Um, is affected. Fewer borrowers might be shopping, leading to lower housing prices. You know, it kind of depends on where you are in society, so you you will understand that. Um, student loan borrowers are, are also very reluctant to use other types of credit, so they might not, hopefully they're reluctant to, to use other types of credit because they're looking at what it is the credit is going to cost them they're being aware of they're having smart money habits and understanding everything because if they take out more credit than they have th than they should they're going to end up in a bigger hole than possible so by chance credit cards car loans mortgages all these things are going to be lower and take put a delay and will affect will slow down the economic growth so these are things we need to keep in mind of um, while it's not necessarily there's while there's not necessarily any upside to, to it, more and more students are attending colleges. So that's good. That's a good thing that more and more students are attending colleges, which means we're having a better educated workforce. We're hoping that students are finishing the colleges because right now the debt crisis, the, the, the student loans that, that they had in, to be impacted by the forgiveness that's in Congress or in the government right now that they're talking about, um, 80% of those did not finish their education, whether it's a two-year degree, a four-year degree, they did not finish it. So it, it suggests to me, and I'm sure to many people, that if 80% of that market did not finish their degree, are they thinking about what they're doing? Is, it, is the, the debt a reason why they're not finishing their degree? Are they investing in it uh, you know, not in the right situation because they're not thinking about what their investment is in their education. Because in order for you to make the money to pay back the loan, you're going to need to finish that part of an education. Um, more and more kids are going to college. That means we're going to have a better workforce. Hopefully that, that our kids are going to be finishing um, school and, and 
that will increase the tax revenue for the government. So that's what we need to look at also. There's no clear solution for the student loan debt crisis. I just want you guys to be aware that it just doesn't affect, um, it just doesn't affect people that are owning the debt. It affects all of us in society. We need to understand, we need to be more financial literate about the cost of our education. Not just the borrowers, the schools need to be more uh, financial literacy. They, they need the high schools, the colleges, the universities, the parents, the economy, the economy as a whole. The government needs to put um, things into perspective so we can make our education more affordable and we can educate our students about how to make sure that we are making student loan as part of our investment, understanding where we can afford to go to college and where we can't afford to go to college. In my opinion, the college you go to is just like the house you buy or the car that you buy. You, you, um, buy. Um, not because you can buy a Mercedes-Benz or get a million-dollar house. You should necessarily do that. Are you will uh, be able to afford it down the line. Just like how you're thinking about your car payment and how you can afford that, you gotta think about your student loan payment. When you get out of college, when you get out of university, can you are you able to afford that and still live the life that you wanna live? So that's gonna that's the question I want all of our students to keep asking each other, all of our parents to keep asking each other, and all of the universities when they're putting financial packages together for these students to understand what the students are going, not just accepting the students and putting this financial package sec second or third. The financial package should be part of the decision making of the society. So we want to make sure that we're doing that. We want to make sure that, you know, our economy as a whole, everyone in our economy pays a role in in the student debt crisis. Uh, we want to make sure that we're able to avoid it. We can't just keep canceling the debt when it comes up to become a crisis. We have to be able, we, that's a band-aid. We can't be putting band-aids on it. We have to have a better structure on how we are formulating this and how it affects society as a whole and how it affects the students that are taking the debt out, how it affects them when they graduate and they become successful members of society um, because they won't be able to live up to their potential. They won't be able to live up to their wages. Um, they will have to be in a lower bracket because they're paying a student loan student loans off and sometimes that is three four hundred thousand dollars so we have to be aware of those things so this is the first part on our student loan debt crisis and i will continue with our next part thank you so much for tuning in as always feel free to give me a follow to get updated on new and upcoming episodes and listen in every tuesday and thursday where i teach you smart money habits so you can make better money choices with a financial goal focus